Our entire monetary system as we know it is about to change. If you haven't already heard, the Federal Reserve today launched their long-awaited instant payment service, modernizing our relic systems and our entire financial system, our money, our cash, the way that we're paid, it is all about to change. The Fed launches real-time payment system. You can instantly transfer and access money 24 hours a day with FedNow. Now, this is the first in several steps to modernizing our financial system globally. Now, this is going to be in a national level for our U.S. central banks, but this is going to disrupt everything. And just to clarify, this has no relationship relation to the CBDC that's underway right now. As the Federal Reserve clarifies, this has no relation to it, but it is the next step. And this is directly from the Federal Reserve's page for the Central Bank Digital Currency or the CBDC that they're planning to launch by the year 2030. They're saying that everything that we know about money and our monetary system will be transformed, updated, and money will be able to go to and fro at the speed of light. But not everybody's a fan. Ron DeSantis promises to ban CBDC if he's elected the president, as he's saying that this is too much control for the federal government to have to have have a centralized digital currency that they are monitoring, accessing, controlling. They literally could just shut people's access to their money off if they desired. And although the Federal Reserve is telling us that cash will still be available, the Wall Street banks also are saying that the digital dollar, they're bracing for it because it's going to be the next disruptive force and cash will essentially go the way of the dodo in the race towards digital money 2.0 as we will finally be modernizing our monetary system, updating it, and cash essentially will no longer be needed as we'll be able to transfer in real time time one to another with an efficient system will not only be a digital currency of our own centralized government controlled blockchain within the United States, but globally. Now this just came out today, as I mentioned, it's all over the news and I'm going to get you caught up on the latest on this as this is not the end. This is just the beginning of the transformation of our global monetary system like we've never seen before. Now I'm going to get you some of the latest details as to what happened today with the Federal Reserve, the Central Bank and Fed now so you know exactly what's going on with the latest. But before we dive in, do me a quick favor. If you appreciate the updates, don't forget, smash the like button, hit subscribe to stay up to date. It's totally free. Why not? And let's go ahead and dive right in. All right. So as always, link in the description below to this article that came out in the past 24 hours. There's articles left and right. This one's going to give us a little bit more clarification as to what's happening right now with Fed now that's going to be giving instant access to funds. Now, the article says that the U.S. Federal Reserve is due to imminently launch a long-awaited service which will aid to modernize the country's payment system by eventually allowing everyday Americans to send and receive funds in seconds, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. The Fed now service, which has been in the works since 2019, will seek to eliminate the several-day lag that it commonly takes cash transfer to settle, bringing the U.S. in line with the countries including the United Kingdom, India, Brazil, as well as the European Union, where similar services have existed for years. FedNow is launching in 41 banks and 15 service providers certified to use the service, including community banks and large lenders like J.P. Morgan Chase, Bank of the New York Melton, and U.S. Bank Corp. But the Fed plans to onboard more banks and credit unions this year. The service will complete the private sector real-time payment system, including the clearinghouse's RTP network and was initially opposed by big banks who said it was redundant. But many have since agreed to participate on the basis of FedNow will allow them to expand their services that they can offer clients. For us, FedNow really is a wonderful way of expanding reach. Unlike peer-to-peer -peer payment services like Venmo or PayPal, which act as intermediaries between banks, payments made via FedNow will settle directly in central bank accounts. The Fed also operates a real-time payment system called FedWire, but that's reserved for large-scale, mostly corporate payments and is only operational during business hours. While the new FedNow system is for everyone, it's likely to benefit consumers and small businesses the most, analysts have said. We want our clients to benefit from these capabilities. We want that to be a competitive edge for us. Small banks, which often connect to FedWire via larger lenders encouraged the Fed to develop FedNow, arguing that it would allow them to access to real-time payments without having to pay larger competitors for the service. Having the Fed in the space makes our members' feet more comfortable that their needs will be met, that they will be treated fairly for pricing. FedNow will not charge consumers, although it's unclear whether or how participating banks will pass on any costs associated with the services. Some market participants have raised concerns that the FedNow could supercharge a potential bank run by facilitating fast overflow from financial institutions, a fear that was amplified after the failure of Silicon Valley Bank earlier this year. But the Fed officials have downplayed those concerns, arguing that the banks have tools available to mitigate a wave of outflows. At the outset, FedNow will have a maximum payment limit of $500,000, but banks can choose to lower that cap if they need. So the FedNow service launched today, but just to clarify, this is not the CBDC that's coming, as the Federal Reserve has clarified this, that it has no relation to the CBDC that's on the way. The United States Federal Reserve clarified that its new service for instant payments between organizations, the FedNow service, has no relation to the CBDC or central bank digital currency. 
The Fed certified that the FedNow service as ready after it onboarded 41 financial institutions and 15 service providers and the U.S. Department of Treasury to test the system before its launch by the end of July of 2023. However, the central bank had to clarify that the promise of instant flat payments and real-time gross settlements is not powered by the CBDC. And here's a tweet from the Federal Reserve that says, Is the FedNow service replacing cash? Is it a central bank digital currency? The answer is no, it is not. But these are steps yet to come. And again, this is a major step towards massive disruption in our financial system. Let's take a look at this. Organizations that have completed certification for the FedNow services. You can see participants on the left, service providers on the right. On the left, massive big banks are on board and also service providers well known as well. So let me know your thoughts. Do you support this? Do you think that we're going to be modernizing and updating our financial system? It will be ease of access for people to get their funds. Or do you think that this is too much government? control, to have a centralized bank where the government is overseeing everything, all of these digital transfers. And again, a lot of people are concerned about the ability for them to simply shut off people's access to their funds. Well, Ron DeSantis takes that stance as Ron DeSantis promises that if he is the president, that he will ban CBDC from taking place in the United States. Current governor of Florida and GOP presidential hopeful Ron DeSantis continues his campaign against the central bank digital currency, vowing a ban if he were elected president. Done, dead, not happening in this country, says Ron DeSantis. If I am the president on day one, we will nix central banking digital currencies. DeSantis has been an outspoken critic of CBDCs for allowing government-sanctioned surveillance, and in March he signed a bill to prohibit the use of the national CBDC as money within Florida. However, as for the broader subject of crypto, he's been far more supportive, previously calling its use a question of civil liberty in describing Bitcoin or BTC as the threat to the current regime. Central bank digital currencies, which are tokenized forms of the country's fiat currency issued by the government, are becoming a growing wedge between political sides in the U.S., with the GOP, broadly speaking, not in favor, and the Democrats so far mostly silent on the subject. So this is going to be coming, and without a doubt, the way things have unfolded with cryptocurrency is ironic because the crypto community desired to create a digital currency, a decentralized currency with no government control. However, as a result of them creating this, the Federal Reserve, the central banks had seen that their power over the money was slipping away. And then now they have stepped in and they're going to be creating a centralized digital currency, which will be government controlled. And as a result of the crypto community trying to create this thing to avoid government control, they literally have created even more control for the government and have now created the monster which they sought to avoid. So again, just to clarify, the FedNow system is not utilizing a blockchain technology to make these instant payments. However, the CBDC that is coming, we're hearing, will have that ability and it will be a centralized digital currency controlled by the federal government. So again, let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. Do you support this? Do you not? Do you think that it's a good time to get rid of cash, invest into hard assets like real estate, gold, silver? Are we going to experience hyperinflation and go into a barter system? Do you have bullets and bread and eggs? Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. Now, in addition to that, we've also received warnings from the IRS of massive scams taking place right now. And I want to make sure that nobody falls victim to any of these scams here on my channel. So if you missed those videos, be sure to check it out right here as in the past couple weeks, we've received several warnings. Make sure that you do not lose your identity, your bank account information to scammers. Check those out next and I'll keep you up to date here on the channel. But with that being said, thank you so much for joining me. I'll catch you in the next video. Take care. God bless. This is Steve.